Hi hey everyone and welcome to another tutorial. This one is for Unreal Engine and it will show you how to create your own sharpening filter using a post-process volume inside Unreal Engine. A lot of people get their really amazing shots in Unreal Engine using um, a lot of post-processing work after and one of those could be sharpening your image. Well now you can do that directly in Unreal Engine and all you need to do is just set up a material. It's quite easy, quite, um, you know, very easily to set it up. And then once it's done, you can apply it wherever you want in the scene. You can have it being activated as your camera moves within the scene. So this applies to a image, still image, but also can apply uh, to a video. Um, obviously you could ask, add this in post, but again, if you're making a game or anything like that, you would want to have your post-processing setting inside the Unreal Engine already uh, preset. And again, this is quite straightforward, so I'll show you. Um, you can also see a side-by-side, -side, well, uh, before and after sort of effect, so you can clearly um, uh, you know, see the difference yourselves. I, for example, <clears throat> use a lot of Megascan assets in my work, and although the texture work and the geometry detail on them is quite good, in some cases, the, 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 the work, you know, the, the necessary fidelity of the scene may not be quite there. And this sharpening method does allow for more detail to, to exist within the scene that otherwise wouldn't be there. So you wouldn't, you, you would, you would don't have to go in and you know um, change the UV or create new textures with high resolution because sharpening does go a long way of bringing a more uh, you know more detail within the scene. But let's not um, you know let's not let's not waste any more time and let's begin. Now that we're in Unreal Engine, let's have a look. I've got my post-processing volume right here. If I deactivate it, you can see the difference between without, this is without post-processing sharpening. This, so this post-processing volume that I'm going to see only adds sharpening. And if I activate it, you can see now the sharpness that it provides. If we open the material, which you need to add as a post process material, you create a new array and you add the material in here once it's created. Uh, we can search for it. So this is in a content browser, just like any other material. If we double click it, you will see that it has a, um, so the material output is a material domain with a post process um, added to it. So that, that's the material domain that we selected. And these are the nodes that make up this entire post processing sharpening material. So we're gonna create our own now. I'm just gonna go through all of these step by step so you can make your own sharpening. Uh, material in just a second. So in our um, content browser, let's right click and add a material. By the way, as I've said before, this works in Unreal Engine 4 and Unreal Engine 5, so it doesn't really matter. I'm going to, I'm going to name my um, post process, I'm going to name my material as post process tutorial, and I'm going to double click it. And now in here, we're going to set up the material to begin with as a material domain post process. So this is telling Unreal Engine, this is a post process material. And then we want to start adding our nodes in that basically will um, create our material. To begin with, we want to add some texture uh, coordinates. So just type in texture C and that should bring up the texture coordinate. This is an entire, this is the same coordinate that's going to go in every other node that we um, we put into our material over here, and we, then we want to add an append vector uh, node, and we want to multiply this four times. Now we can set these up um, similar to you know sort of like in this fashion. Obviously, I'm not gonna spend my time putting my noodle, noodles to look quite nice because that would just defeat the whole purpose of the tutorial. But we've got four append nodes in here. So we're basically appending between some uh, parameters. Um, so, so we're doing multiple parameters, we're appending them together, to then feed into an add, add node that then goes into a scene texture post-process input. So the parameters are going to be the ones that are driving basically the um, uh, overall the, the, the sharpening effect. So uh, let's just add um, four nodes. So that's four nodes for, um, you know, just, just um, putting these appending, you know, these appending, uh, appended appendices <laughs> and texture coordinates together. So we're just going to put them like this, you know, spread them a bit, just like we did with the append node. We're gonna add, put our add nodes in here as well. And then we want to bring in 
that seam texture that I told you about. So just select the seam texture and make sure you change it. Um, so you, you need to change it to a post-process input. So I'll go with post-process input zero. And then again, you can just multiply that four times uh, as well. Um, and this just this just brings up all of the sort of necessary nodes that we would need to work with. There's still some uh, nodes uh, subtracting the saturated node that we're going to add, but we're going to get to that later. First, we need to set all of these together uh, before we proceed. So I like to link these nodes from the right to the left because they are quite a complicated mess, I would say, to get them running. Um, you want to add, put all the add nodes into your UVs for the scene texture post-processing input. Uh, so once that's done, we then want to look at this parameter over here. And this one links into a few of the, um, the append nodes, uh, namely the A of the first and the second append. And then we have this particular parameter over here. This connects to the um, first B. Um, and then it also goes all the way over here to this add node. The texture coordinate links into the B of um, um, into the, this add over here. Um, it then also connects to. I'm actually looking at you know looking at this material just just doing it pretty much again because it's such a complicated mess. Like I've said, I had to really test these around a lot to, to get them going. Now the texture coordinate also links over into this add node and uh, then it connects to, I believe, no, that would be it really. I think it just connects to these. Um, actually, this wasn't meant to connect there. This is meant to connect over here while the texture coordinate will go into the this node. And we have our append going into the add. So this is why I've got these appends set up like this because they just connect into the A value over here. Um, so that's that's now connected. We do have this append that we need to connect this parameter to it. We don't need this fourth parameter. I don't actually know why about it. We just need this one. And this one also connects over into this append and this then connects to this parameter here. I know it's a, Honestly, it's a nightmare to get all of these connected. And the second one, um, so I'm trying to figure out, the second one actually connects over into the A of this node, and the top one actually connects into the B. <laughs> Honestly, this is, um, this is actually quite complicated because I think I've messed them up still even with this, but you know what, we'll just leave this like this for now and we'll see where that links later on. But the parameters themselves, themselves I found that the best ones is, we leave this as zero, and we put this as 0 0.001, um, and then we need to take this one over here to put into a negative value, a 0 0.001 as well. And once that's done, basically these are now completed. Uh, we want to duplicate this add node and bring it over here and then duplicate it again, put it over here and then another one over here. So what we're doing now is we're connecting the color of these post-process inputs uh, from here and here into this add node and, this, and then this goes into B. These two go over here, so we're basically adding them together and we're bringing them into this, uh, we're connecting them over here. Now, what we want to add is a divide node, and then with this divide node in place, we can then take our add and connect it over here. And we need to divide this number by four, so we're just going to add another uh, value in here, and we change this to four. Um, and now, what was it done? We can we can also we need to do another copy of this, and we need to add another texture coordinate node. So from there all the way to here, you know, just uh, again, we actually need, I believe, two of these. So let me just check that one out. Yeah, so we need two of these scene textures and we bring this one down here again with the same texture coordinates. So all of them have to have the same texture coordinate. Um, and this is where we've got our divide uh, that then comes into place with a subtract. So let me just add the subtract math node and we're dividing between uh, this one and the color of this one. 
Uh, once this attraction is done, we then want to add a multiply node. And with the multiply node added, we're just going to put a subtract in here and uh, again, put another add node. And we, uh, we're adding between the multiplication of our parameter. So we want to have another parameter in here. We can convert this to a parameter and we can call it sharpen intensity, for example. Um, and this will basically give us the intensity of the sharpness that we're adding within the scene. And we can default this at, let's say, at 0 0.5. Um, and then this multiply has to go into the saturation node, uh, which we don't, we're not going to add anything, to, we're not going to change anything to it. Um, so we're just going to put the multiplication of the saturation node in there. And then we want to add this into. You know, we just, we just combine these two and then put that into the emissive color. Now, this should basically give us a working node, uh, but we do have a, a slight problem in here. One of the nodes is in error, which is this one, because it's not connected to anything. So we really need to debunk that sort of part there, what goes into our third append node. And I'm just trying to follow it through. Um, so... Yeah, I believe it's this one here. So once we do that, let's just click, click apply. And then we want to see if our node actually works. Um, so let's just close the panel. We can go into our post process. So you can you can add a new post process if you want. Bear in mind, you'll find the option down here in the rendering features. You've got post process material. What you need to do is just click the add button and then it will let you choose and you just click asset reference and then you can just search for your material. But obviously I'm going to delete that since I've already got this area created. Now, obviously the material will show up. This is the M post process tutorial, but again, you can search for whatever name you've added onto this. So I'm just going to add that, uh, material, that material over there. So you can see if I get very close to this rock here, if I turn this all the way down, the sharpness is gone. If I bring it to see that, you can see how doing, you know, going left to right, pretty much as the sharpen will remove the sharpen as intended. So this is basically how you create the sharpening material um, in there. So we can search again for the material. I'm going to just pan around the node a bit so you can see it. Bear in mind, these are quite a lot of, there's a lot of math in here of subtraction and adding uh, parameters. For the texture coordinate, you know, you keep it at one to one in here. You link this to all the you to all to the append, sorry, to the add nodes in here into these um, into these two scene post process inputs. Put those all together. You, this is basically the main branch right here, this part um, where there's all the divisions of the um, of the uh, of the scene sample. Basically, I, I don't know the intricacies, but this is how it works basically. Uh, again, I've looked over the internet and I have to find a solution for this. I also saw a video on YouTube that was, was actually quite an old video uh, put together. And then you link all of these in here and you can also play with this intensity. So for example, I don't know, if you go to a five, um, this will then <laughs> basically really bring that sharpness up by quite a lot as you can clearly see. So this is what the this is what the parameter does. You cannot change the parameter in here. You actually got to come over um, over into the actual material. So again, the parameter it just helps you to uh, be able to change that value. So you know you can take it to ten, and then once you apply it, it will just fully sharpen the scene. Um, you know, incredibly high, which is obviously not something that you want, but maybe this is an effect that you're looking for. Uh, but I keep it at a 0 0.5 or a 1. It really depends on what, uh, what sort of, what's the intended purpose of the scene that I'm, I'm trying to build. Uh, but yeah, I hope you guys found this tutorial useful and I hope you've learned something today. This is a very good example of how to get some really amazing uh, renders. Uh, now I'm just going to come in here, you know, just press play and just show you how the scene looks on the ground as well. Um, so this is me walking this character through the scene and it's got the post processing enabled. Um, you can see what this looks like. Now if I press shift one and then go into my post process and deactivate it, 
this is obviously um, actually one second. Yeah, this is with and this is without. As you can see, so with, without. Obviously, I like it more with, but depending on your preference, you can go with uh, without kind of an effect if that's what you're looking for. But I'll see you guys in the next video. Please leave a like and comment to subscribe if you wish to see more. And yeah, uh, keep creating.